Did you know that motion control games already existed before the Wii, iToy and the Kinect? Well, let me introduce you to Dragon Ball Z Let's TV Play. Hey, beautiful people. Thank you for tuning in at The Dutch Guy. And today I have a great Japanese import game called... You know what? Goku, help me out with this. You know what? Let's dive right into the unboxing segment. So after I pulled off all the plastic stickers, I finally could get the goody goodies out of its cardboard shell. This is what you get for your money. The console itself, a Japanese manual, proprietary RCA cable, two wireless sensors, and some unnecessary cardboard and plastic bags. Batteries not included. The Let's TV Play is a series of Japan-only plug-and-play devices distributed by Bandai. They are self-contained gaming systems which hook up to a television set via RCA cables. They need four AA batteries to operate or you can hook up a 6 volt adapter as shown in the manual. In 2004, a company called Zavex came with the Zavex port. It was advertised as an interactive motion control based game console. With a built-in infrared sensor on the front and two reflectors in your hand, it allowed to play games in a Wii style fashion. Sadly, due to poor marketing, it flopped big time and the Zavex port never took off the ground. Hmm, if they only teamed up with Nintendo. In 2005, Bandai and Zavex partnered up to make some exclusive Japan-only plug-and-play consoles. They released four titles in total for the Dragon Ball Z franchise. Battle Taigon Kamehameha Ometo Fusion, Battle Taigon Kamehameha 2, Osu Ome Goku Tenkaichi Budokai, Scouter Battle Taigon Kamehameha Ora to Ome to Scouter, and the crossover game Dragon Ball Z vs One Piece Battle Taikan Gomu Gomu no Kamehameha Ome no Ku de Ora o Yobu. <laughs> like the Zavex port, Dragon Ball Z Battle Taikan comes with an infrared sensor on the front and two reflectors called Dragon Bands, which should be placed around the middle on the ring finger. The game is set as an unreal shooter. By opening and closing your hands, you can shoot key blasts and other various energy beams. To fight you have to punch to the screen, brush away attacks by somewhat waving to the sensor and blocking enemy attacks by putting your fists close to your head. To turn Super Saiyan, you simply put your hands in the sky and rock them back against your hips. Another cool feature is that you can do the classic moves like the Kamehameha by making the appropriate hand motions. It's like the Kinect, but better. <laughs> Crawling through the menu, it looks familiar and it's very much like the Tenkaichi series. In the menu you can choose various options such as story mode, calibration and it even has a safe state built inside the console. By beating the game you unlock new characters such as Vegeta or Piccolo to give the game a higher replay value. The story mode is very basic and does not include every saga that Dragon Ball Z has to offer. The game has 5 stages and each stage starts with a prelude where you battle against the infamous Cyberman or Frieza soldiers. It proceeds with a mini-boss such as Nap or Cell Jr. and ends with a boss fight. Completing the boss fights can be very hard because in typical unreal shooter fashion, when you die, you die. <laughs> Get it? When you die, you... <laughs> Moving on. In between stages you will find various mini-games such as climbing Corrin's tower, catching sensu beans and taking out as many Cybermen as you can. The gameplay is about 40 minutes long and will add up if you replay the game with the unlockable characters. The graphics are a mixture of sprited characters and a 3D background. But hey, at least it's widescreen, right? So as long as you have a region free TV and really dig Unreal shooter games, this is a must for every Dragon Ball Z fan out there. And I consider it a hidden gem in the gaming community. So that was a review of the Dragon Ball Z Let's TV Play. But for now, 老子叫你知道我们罗马功夫的厉害。来吧。<laughs>